Thank you very much, uh, Stefan, for your introduction. I'm excited um, to present um, our work here at the conference. At this um, first um, picture, you can see red water. This is uh, because our research institute is uh, located in Rosacea, which is um, shaped by the lignite uh, mining industry. And, and due to this um, acid mine drainage, the water in some bodies um, of water is uh, still red, um, hence this um, cover picture. But that's the topic today, the topic today is uh, from the need to cool the landscape to the localization of um, specific measures. Oops. So what I want to do today, I want to talk um, about the overheating um, of the landscape um, first, um, then to look um, shortly to why cool the landscape and then come to the measures selection and localization of um, measures, um, yes. First, some words um, about um, our model um, region. Um, it's uh, district um, Elbe-Elster. It's located in the south of um, Brandenburg in um, Germany. It's about 1,900 square kilometers. Um, and I'm referred to this uh, model region because we have an ongoing research uh, project um, to climate adaptation in this um, district. And um, it's a district um, where the potential evapotranspiration is um, greater than the precipitation. So there's always um, a water deficit in the summer. But um, of course, still it is classified here as a humid um, climate. And we are looking what can we do in this area to enhance uh, water um, retention. Our project, um, you see this um, logo on some of these um, slides, um, is called Integrative Anticipatory Water Balance Based Climate Adaptation, Elbe Elster. Sorry for this um, title but um, we just needed it to get some money to research. Overheating the landscape, um, here's just one example from um, one climate station here in um, our region. And we compared um, the old climate normal uh, period from 1961 to 99 uh, with the present uh, time series. And we can see that the precipitation is um, less than the last year, but there's no clear trend. Um, the climate projections rather assume that there's a slight increase with some shift um, of the precipitation into the winter months. But however, when we look at the air temperature, we can see there's a, a clear trend in the recent um, years. We can see there's more than 1.5 degree. So if this is a target um, 1.5 degree, um, then we have this uh, long um, been exceeded. So we are much more warmer today. And this is... Um, not without um, impact, and, and if we um, calculate the potential evapotranspiration, then we can see this is um, normally um, higher than this uh, climate normal period and the climatic um, water balance, which is uh, just the calculation from the other um, values um, shows this is um, highly negative in the last years, and this is a problem um, here in the landscape. So the landscape is um, already getting um, warmer. And if we now look um, in this landscape, so you can see here on the left side a uh, normal picture with um, a dry land uh, and some um, trees in the background and a lake in the background. This is here in the post mining landscape um, near my home. Um, and on the right, the right side, um, you can see the thermal infrared picture. I have taken some um, years ago now. And um, if you look uh, for the numbers uh, which are given there, there are temperature difference um, between um, the dry land um, and the trees. That is um, over 18 degrees. That is only one example, but um, you can see how much these differences are. 
And the causes, the cause um, of this difference um, is in evapor is, um, evaporation and the water availability at the different um, stands. Um, but I think um, Jean Pocorni will report uh, this um, in more detail uh, later on. But um, this um, picture, as you can see, is only an example. We can't um, use it to um, monitor um, whole landscapes with, it, uh, with this approach. So we have to go somewhat up in there. And uh, first, I want to uh, show you a small, um, a small section here of the um, district. And I hope you can see um, here my pointer. You can see, for example, here is a um, lake. Uh, this is a Bergheider See. This is an open cast um, mining lake. And it's surrounded by dry um, areas, um, the succession areas. But you can also see here the city of um, Finsterwalde. And you can see that is here one airport. And here is the second airport. We can see that there are some um, forests um, around and some agriculture um, between. And um, that uh, is what we have done next. Um, we used um, thermal images uh, from the Landsat. Um, and you can see here exactly the same um, landscape um, section. The surface temperatures um, shows really the surface. It's, uh, means that it's not the forest shadow with, uh, which um, cools the landscape, but it's a canopy um, which we can see here. And you can see the red areas that are the very um, warm areas and the blue ones, um, which, is, which are cooler in this um, landscape. This image here is um, calculated from data of the summer um, half years from May to September from the years 2030 to 2020. That um, means uh, about uh, 39 um, thermal images we have um, calculated into one um, image. So that means that every pixel here you can see is um, uh, not only one point in time, but it's um, reported again and again. So we have a stable signal to um, see what happens really here in our um, landscape. The results here are not given in uh, degrees um, Kelvin because of this um, calculation of the different um, thermal um, scenes, but it's a relative index. But I think you can clearly see this um, uh, landscape um, here again, you can see the cool um, lake. Um, yes, you can see the overheated landscape um, around the succession stadiums. We can see here some areas which are used for photovoltaics. Um, we can see the city of Finsterwalde. We can see the one of the um, airports and see the other airport. We can also see there's here um, a line which um, is used for a gas pipeline and it's not um, still not close this vegetation. But for example, um, you can see here also the um, agriculture and here you can see um, one of these forests and it's very interesting. So the forest is uh, divided into two parts. One part is uh, cooler and the other part is uh, more overheated and uh, the um, part in the rest um, is more or less um, pine uh, forest. And here we have more broadleaf um, forest. And so we have already a small fan, a small bog here in this uh, um, area, which um, cools. So this is um, approach. We have a tool to measure the overheating of the landscape and um, so we can see which parts of this landscape um, can contribute to um, water, small water cycles and which um, are not. And you already can look from other channels from this landscape um, data and, and can derive a moisture index and uh, can see which areas are more moist or, um, or wet and which are more dry. You can see the um, red ones, uh, again, the dry ones and uh, the blue 
uh, represent some more wet areas. And you can see, for example, here is a um, small um, peat bog here and the forest. Um, so we can have a very good representation about um, these um, areas. Yes, and the surface temperature is um, the result of this um, water balance and the vegetation, and um, we can derive this uh, directly from the data. Here is um, given a simple evaluation of this land surface temperature according to the different land cover classes, and uh, the water bodies are the coolest as uh, we um, expected. Lowland uh, fans are warmer than um, the needle forest and similarly warm as uh, pine forests. And that is very interesting. But the reason is that many of these lowland fans are intensively used uh, for agriculture, so they are more near on the grasslands. The forests um, show a clear differentiation. The deciduous forests are the coolest. Um, um, cooler than the pine forest, um, and you can see further that the settlements um, are the warmest and a little bit warmer than the fields, and not shown here are the heathlands and dry grasslands, um, which are part partially um, more warmer than the settlements. So what does this um, mean? There's a lot of impacts, and I think you know very much, so I can um, give you only some um, highlights um, to this. Um, the first one is the question of soil. You can see here such an um, peat soil um, in our area. Um, that does not only dries out faster, but also warms um, up more strongly. So we have a higher microbiological activity um, according to the Van Topf um, rule. That uh, means the organic matter is um, um, faster mineralized and all the contained nutrients and minerals are released. And so we have very high substance and discharges from the water catchment areas. And if we go further here to the um, agriculture in the last years, we um, have uh, had uh, considerable problems due to the uh, drought. And so this year, sunflowers and some fields have only grown to knee, uh, knee height. So that is also a question of um, food, uh, food security. And um, forestry, we have um, had this year um, severe forest uh, fires, and uh, there are also um, calamities of bark beetles and other pests in these uh, monocultures because uh, pine have problems with temperatures um, more than 35 degrees um, Celsius. And also biodiversity is a problem. We have some new species like uh, this um, scarlet dragonfly fly and um, other species, but there are also a lot of um, species um, which, um, is, uh, which are um, lost. And this uh, species loss is often less conspicuous and gradual than um, the newcomers um, we can um, look for. And the last year is um, the groundwater. The groundwater is, had been um, lowered in um, declining in the last years or for a lot of years now. And in addition to this um, climate change, this is also a long-term consequence of um, the meliorations and the pine monocultures. And, as a consequence, um, dependent ecosystems such as um, peatlands and uh, ponds um, and lakes are lacking water. But there may be, but maybe there's a much more important impact um, too. And this is a question of um, large scale and small scale uh, water uh, cycles. So overheating of the landscape is not only, but also the result of this um, landscape uh, land use uh, changes and the drainages and the drainage ditches continue to have um, still an effect today. Uh, the forests, for example, are currently thinning out uh, further, so there's um, less leaf surface and um, less evapotranspiration. And in the humid landscape, I think the water cycle is obvious. The evaporated water returns as precipitation due, etc. Even if it is specially shifted more or less um, by the wind. But in the overheated landscape, the precipitation processes also change. We have um, 
only a few small scale water cycles or even no one um, offsets. But um, this is much more correctly um, drawn here from the perspective of, of um, atmospheric um, physics um, as um, Anastasia Makarieva and her colleagues have presented here the facts. And um, the problem is that in the humid, well evaporated landscapes, the rising humid air provides um, moisture replenishment um, from the sea. And in this overheated landscape, the air all uh, so rises, but the moisture it contains does not condense. And that is a problem. So uh, the moisture is blown away, away from the land. And, uh, so we have a problem with our water cycles. Um, and when hydrologists talk about evapotranspiration as a loss, they are both right and wrong, depending on the situation. If we have an arid situation or wet situation. And our goal must be to keep the landscape so moist that evapotranspiration is not a loss, but results in um, further precipitation. And- That's uh, my question. Sorry? Five minutes to go. Five minutes to go. So I will speed up a little bit, but I think we go. Um, this is um, what we do in um, our um, project. I don't want to go here in the detail. Our um, main focus is our solution approach is to look um, which measures could we take specially specific um, and decentralized uh, for water retention for all the different land uses. That's mean um, agriculture, forestry, um, settlements, nature conservation, and so on. And um, we looked um, for these uh, measures. I will uh, show you um, in the next slide. And um, we do some modeling, some statistics to um, evaluate um, the effects of this. and. Um, we also um, do some um, economic uh, figures about this, about the cost, and uh, we have an optimization tool, but I don't want to go here in this uh, details. There are a wide range of um, measures which are possible, and um, I think you know a very lot of these measures we collected here, about um, 13 measures which are suitable um, for the conditions in our um, district. You can um, download this uh, measures here at, uh, from Sinodo, uh, where it is all um, mm -hmm. documented. Um, and um, the measures maybe look very different, but the question is always the same. How can more water be retained on the site, on the surface, so that it can later be evaporated um, again by the vegetation? That's uh, always the same um, question. So just uh, a small jump here in two examples. One is that uh, ditch stems, uh, they could contribute uh, to retain the water in the landscape. Um, they are built uh, in, in former times, but um, they are in most cases not more functional, but we can uh, again make them functional, but we have to change the um, Modus, uh, we have to change um, how they are uh, steered um, to hold the water back because um, when they're built, there had been other hydrological contribution. And of course, I know here this um, animal could do it very much more better than we, but um, the beaver and the farmers are mostly not so good um, friends. The other example, I think you know it too, um, are the example of uh, forest transformation, the conversion from this um, pine forest we have here to um, broadleaf um, forest, um, because um, there we have a better cooling process, which is um, already known in 1890. Um, but um, we also have um, higher groundwater recharge um, under these um, areas. Here on this um, slide, I want to show you what we have done. Um, we um, used um, all these um, small um, uh, sites here of the district. Um, we divided the whole district in over um, 59,000 sub-areas. And then we um, um, 
developed um, algorithms um, to determine on which areas uh, different methods would be suitable in principle. And uh, for this, we use the large number of other geodata, for example, on relief, on soil quality, on the water causes, and we check the adjacencies between different um, land use, et cetera, et cetera. And um, there had been a lot of problem, but in total, uh, we could propose for more than 80% of this um, uh, sub areas, um, some measures which could be done to improve the water retention and the evapotranspiration um, on this area. Here we have an example from the settlements. And here's a second example um, where you can see um, measures uh, which are here given on uh, arable land um, or on the forest. Um, so it's only one example to see um, what we um, have done. So there's a very specific uh, measures for the different uh, stakeholders, for the farmers, uh, for the foresters to use um, this um, data um, later on. So, because the time is um, scar, um, I want to come to my conclusions. Um, I've showed you that there's a thermal signature which uh, shows a differentiated picture of the landscape. Um, we can see there are increased temperatures in the landscape with consequences, with impacts um, on the different land use um, classes. And uh, what we can see, which it's um, likely we have um, severe feedbacks to the water cycle. So that it's a strong, um, important task um, here to change um, our um, management of this area. And because evapotranspiration is an area-based process, we can do this not only on small areas, but we have to do it uh, on the whole landscape. So, that is the reason why the local water retention for the vegetation is uh, central and um, all of our measures have to be located in the area and uh, if possible should be integrated into the land use because um, the people use this land to produce some um, fruit and um, other products and um, our objective is um, to do climate adaptation and mitigation of impacts by this water retention and um, evapotranspiration of the um, vegetation. And I, be, I want to stress that these uh, measures in the area are urgently needed and we are overdue, we can say, because uh, it is important to start now. Thank you very much. <laughs>